Hi there. If you, like myself, don't have a TV, then you won't have access to the brilliant show of Ellen DeGeneres. And as Ellen's always saying, you have to reach for the stars. Or was that Buzz Lightyear? Mm. Not sure, I'm always getting the two mixed up. But anyway, Ellen was determined to be on the cover of O Magazine. She kept at it, and she was. And they came out with a brilliant set of O covers. Now, my goal is to become a writer on the Ellen DeGeneres show. So I'm going to set out um, a series of videos to not only entertain you, but also to try and win over um, the Ellen team and hoping that I can one day be one of them. Well, I'm, I'm waffling on and stalling a bit, but um, I wanted to tell you about my trip to the cinema the other day. Yeah, what is it about going to the cinema that it's almost like this primal instinct comes out? Because you're in this dark cave-like structure, it's as if your brain is telling your body that you've got to eat as much as you can because you're not going to see light again until I've been here for years, I've got to eat as much as I can. I don't know how the brain works. I mean, I'm no expert. But all I know is I come out of the cinema, I tweet out to all my followers how I've just seen the latest, uh, let's say, James Bond film, for example, and everyone will tweet back or reply and say, oh, that is so cool. You know, was it as good as the review said? Was there, a, you know, a lot of action? Were things blown up? And I have to then say, um, actually, I was so busy trying to open the sweets quietly and picking up, you know, little bits of popcorn that I'd missed um, off the floor that I missed the plot. You know, I, I missed most of the film. So um, we'll just have to wait till it comes out on DVD and we will find out together. Yeah. One place that I really enjoy watching films is on an aeroplane. Not that there's much else you can actually do on an aeroplane, but I love the fact that you can have 13 hours, or however long you're flying, um, of back-to-back -back films. That, to me, is the life. I absolutely love it. And um, I just, I wonder why airlines don't offer not only in-flight entertainment, but in-flight entertainment food. Well, actually, I have actually thought of why they don't do that. It's a problem. A small problem, small being the operative word here, because can you imagine how small the in-flight entertainment food would be? Yeah. The air hostess would come around with your tiny little box of popcorn, your tiny little plastic cup of Fanta or whatever else it is you, you drink, and um, wow, you'd put it on your little tray in front of you, trying not to hit, the, you know, people next to you, and uh, you'd start your movie, and get your popcorn, and oh, this is great, and you start eating your popcorn, mm. and then while you're doing this and chewing, your earphone falls out. Oh, so you put your earphone back in, and while you're doing this, your elbow goes up. And you hit, hit the person next to you, waking them up. Ah! Oh. You get in such shock that your popcorn goes flying, and um, you're thinking, "Oh, I've got to pick up the popcorn." So you put your head down to pick up the popcorn. Your head hits the their table, and that wakes the baby three seats away. So you've got the screaming baby. You've got the person next to you who's complaining. Everyone then turns around and looks at you as if to say, what? What are you doing? Why can't you just be happy with your hot towel during the movie? I mean, come on. And what is it with aeroplane food and being so small? Honestly, I mean, the last time I flew, I got a uh, fruit salad, which was two grapes and a piece of apple. Now... Now where I come from, fruit salad usually has things like, you know, fruit in it, a selection of fruit. 
like maybe some pineapple, uh, strawberries, banana, mango, you know, anything really, just uh, more than two types of fruit in it. Um, <laughs> but my theory is that people who make the food or create it go on a lot of dates. Mm. Because um, when you're going on a date, especially the first date, get your menu mm -hmm. and you look through it mm -hmm. you don't look for the cheapest thing not not necessarily but smallest thing and when you find that side salad mm, it's I'll have the um, side salad thank you uh, but first could you tell me how how big your side salad is and the waiter will be like uh, excuse me side salad is the size of a side salad and so you'll then have to say, oh, um, but how big is the plate? Is it about that big? You know, is that about the size of the plate? And the waiter's like, mm, yeah, I guess so. Whatever. And so then you will have to say, well, um, that's quite a big size. Um, but because you don't have a half portion, I'll take the full portion of the side salad. Because I do actually have a pet rabbit. So whatever I don't eat, I will take home for for my, my little bunny and so you happily eat your side salad for the for the rest of the night and um, go home after a wonderful date and raid the kitchen as if you're a wild animal you know you've got the peanut butter you've got chicken casserole you've got ice cream leftover pizza sardines tuna chocolate whatever you can get your hands on and it becomes this sort of all-you-can-eat midnight buffet. It's crazy. Unless the date was so good that they come home with you. In which case, you then have to pretend that you're not hungry. And there's many ways that you can do this, um, but most people pretend that they're clearing their throats. So while your stomach is growling and making all these strange noises, you've got to <coughs> <coughs> and that's okay, but once you do it two or three times, your date is probably going to say, you know, is everything okay? Can I get you a glass of water? And so you'll, you know, <coughs> <coughs> it's fine, I've just um, have a uh, fur ball in my throat. I oh, know, no, 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 not a furball. Um, we don't say that, do we? No, that's what my cat says. Uh, I have a frog in my throat. As if that's any better. I mean, what kind of saying is that? A frog in your throat? I'm guessing the person who came up with that is the same person who said we have butterflies in our tummy when we get nervous. Well, I don't think that person has ever been nervous because when I'm nervous, it feels like I have 10 bats flying around, frantically trying to find the nearest exit. Talking about exits. Mm. Well, I have a nephew, the most gorgeous nephew on the planet. And I know everyone says that about their, their, their sons and daughters, brothers, sisters, nephews, nieces, but it's only because they haven't seen my nephew. He really is. the. the the cutest kid on the planet and uh, he's not been well and so um, I was asked to go and look after him for a bit which is great I absolutely love it and um, you get to make all these noises and faces and really let your hair down you know you can and uh, you don't feel stupid at all you know because he's laughing so much and really enjoying it and then when you get to the point in the day when he's you know smelling a bit, you know, funky, you just hand him over and um, he gets sorted out and he comes back all nice and fresh and smelling lovely and um, what I like to do is uh, while my sister's changing the nappy, I'll stand over her shoulder and um, I'll say things like, <gasps> where's the stinky boy, there's a stinky boy, there's a stinky boy, yeah, and then um, what tends to happen is if I get an to the elevator straight after that and um, you start to smell something you get a whiff a little whiff of something you yeah. mm. 
okay. I sometimes turn around and say, <gasps> Who's a stinky boy? Oh, um, <laughs> what? I didn't smell anything. Well, um, thank you for watching. Please leave your comments um, without maybe using the sentence, you suck. Uh, peace out.